In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have a main menu with your quiz hidden until you've completed all the lessons from that menu slide. So this project came up as a result of the Adobe Certified Professional Adobe Captivate session that I just recently was a trainer for. And one of the learners um, inquired about the easy branching solution that's built into Captivate, where you simply label your slide, label your objects, group your lessons together in order to create this easy branching scenario. And they asked, how would I do the same thing in advanced actions? So we on the fly did a solution and I thought I'd share it with you today. So here's a version of the project that we kind of built on the fly. Uh, on slide number two, I have this lesson menu where you can see we've got lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and a link to the quiz as well in this final button here. Now, what we've decided to do is set it up so that the quiz is not visible in output until you've completed lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. So that's how this will work. And uh, so we have lesson one, which just consists of two slides. Lesson two, the same thing, but obviously this would work with many slides in your project. Lesson three, final slide. And then afterwards, you're right into the quiz questions there. So that should work perfectly fine. Now, what we're going to need is we're going to need to keep track of which lessons have been completed in order for this to work. So the first thing we need is we need three variables, one for each lesson. So I'm going to click on the project drop down menu and select variables. And we'll click on add new and we'll call this underscore lesson zero one. I'm going to copy that. Create lesson two. Lesson three. And I don't need to give these an initial value. We'll be checking the value of these variables. And only once they've all been assigned a value of one, will we display that quiz button here. So let's go ahead and close this here. First thing we need is um, an on enter action for this particular slide here. So like, as I said, the quiz button is not visible in output and these two or these three lessons are visible at first. Incidentally, I've set these up to have a visited state, which appears kind of grayed out. You can still click on it and we're going to retain that state on any slide revisit. So when the learner comes back to the slide, if they've already clicked on lesson one, it will show like you see it here. So the first thing we need is an on enter advanced action for this slide. So let's go ahead into advanced actions from our project drop down menu. And we'll simply call this slide to on underscore enter. And this will be a conditional advanced action where we're going to look at the value of those three variables. So the variable we'll start with is lesson one. And if it's equal to the literal value of one, we're going to copy this and paste it two times and then just change the variable that we're checking to lesson two and lesson three. So if all three of them have been visited, we'll be assigning a value of one to each of these variables. And if that's the case, we're going to show our quiz button. We'll save this as an action, click OK and click close. And we're going to run that on enter of this slide. So whether we're here the first time or the second time or the third time, that advanced action will get run every single time here. So I'll select execute advanced actions and we only have the one so far. So it pops up by default slide two on enter. There it is there. Now, what we need to do is at the completion of each of our lessons. So here's lesson one and it finishes with this final slide. And we're going to change the continue button for the final slide of lesson one to do something a little bit different than simply go to next slide. 
In this case here, we're going to need an advanced action for that. So we'll click on the project drop down menu, go to advanced actions, and we will call this lesson 01 complete. And what's going to happen here is we are going to assign our lesson one variable with the literal value of one. We're also going to jump to slide number two. And we'll just scroll down a bit there. And we've called that our learning dashboard. Uh, we can call it whatever you wish. That's just what we've called it here. And that's it. It's a really simple advanced action. We're going to save this as an action. Click OK. But before we move away from here, let's make two more versions of this because it's almost the same advanced action for lesson two and lesson three. So I'm going to click on duplicate action from the upper right hand corner of the advanced actions window. And we'll make an exact copy of that. I'm just going to change the action name to lesson two complete. And all we're going to change is which variable we're assigning a value of one to. So I can just type in lesson two and we'll update that action. Let's duplicate it one more time. And like before, we'll relabel the action name to be lesson three. And we'll update which variable we're assigning a value of one to. Update that action. Click OK. So if you look at your existing actions, in addition to our slide two on enter, we now have lesson one complete, lesson two complete, and lesson three complete. So we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and close the advanced actions window and we're going to change the final continue button in lesson one to execute advanced actions. And we're going to choose lesson one complete. I'm going to scroll down to the final slide of lesson two, select that continue button and execute advanced actions. And we'll choose lesson two complete. Uh, similarly, lesson three, we'll jump down there. We'll select the continue button and assign that to execute lesson three complete. And we should be good to go. So let's test this out. We'll preview in HTML5 in browser. Now I've turned off the play bar because of course I'm providing my own navigation controls at the bottom. I prefer to do that because this way, my navigation controls can appear or not appear depending on what's going on on screen. Let's go ahead and hit begin. So we, as you can see here, we've got lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. Let's visit lesson one first. We go to the first slide of lesson one, we hit continue. And now we're on the final slide of lesson one. And when I press continue, it returns me to my lesson menu. You can see that lesson one is visited. And now we can click on lesson two. We're back to the lesson menu. Lesson two is completed. You can still click these and you still have the rollover effects. You can decide whether you want to keep rollover effects for these or not. Uh, I often will delete rollover effects if I have a visited state. I haven't done that in this case, but it's simple enough to do. Lesson three now. Continue, continue. And now, of course, it returns me to lesson menu. And because the conditions of my conditional advanced action that's run on enter suggests that we visited to all three of these lessons, it's now going to show the quiz button. And of course, then users can start the quiz and answer those quiz questions. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.